Hey everyone, it's Selena here with Surrey 604. Today we're at SFU Surrey and we're here for the Youthquake 2012 conference. And I'm here with one of the speakers, Rick Baines. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. We're so excited to chat with you today. Tell us a little bit about this event that we're at and why you're speaking here. It's a youth entrepreneurship conference. I've spoken to a lot of conferences during the year and kids will come out from those conferences saying, we're gonna put something on, can you come out to that? So it's a total honor. So it seems like you've been speaking for quite some time. When did you start becoming a speaker? Well, I started off at a pretty young age because I didn't know how to do anything else. Then I realized I should start making money doing this. So I started off about, I think about five, six years, just like a small group of people, picked up the book, phone book. This is a story that you'll hear during my talks. And all of a sudden it's gone to uh, you know a couple hundred people to a couple thousand. And um, UBC, SFU, high schools, some corporate stuff now as well, and it's just growing and growing, and I think it's just because of the energy that hap whatever happens in that room, people end up saying, okay, you gotta come do this, you gotta come do that. Yeah, I've actually seen Rick talk, and I and I've have felt the energy myself, so I know that you are an inspirational speaker. Everyone has a story. They've been through whatever they've been through, and it's tough, and they live from that. And the idea is that's not your story. You can change your story. During the talks, I share things about my past, and I only share them because I know there's people sitting in the crowd thinking, you know, I've gone through that. Holy, like, you went through that? And they look at me, they're not really seeing, they're not seeing Rick Baines. They're seeing themselves. They're seeing Mark. They're seeing Lisa. They're seeing, that's who they're seeing up there. And that's why I kind of share my story. And we have a story, but it's, do we buy into it? Or can we change it? People come out, they come to see me speak, they don't realize that I actually failed a hundred, three, four hundred times. I've shown up at places I didn't have this and I didn't have that. I didn't have the right, uh, a limited vocabulary. I couldn't say this and I couldn't say that. And, but I was there. And along the way, people show up and say, you know what, you're meeting me halfway, I'm gonna help you halfway. And that's all the world wants. My world is full of opportunities. People do wanna help, good things do happen, but we create that world. Thank you very much for your time, guys. You do talk a lot about, about you know, about your childhood. and You grew up in Surrey, is, is that correct? I did, actually. I was uh, elementary school in Surrey, all the way through Lena Shaw, and then I went to Guilford Park, Song Street Hood. This Actually, this mall. This used to be a mall that I used to come to, and my dad would give me $2, which went a long way back then. There was a poster shop here. Yeah, there was, like, nothing here except just, just the mall. Yeah, I go way back in the city, way back. So you've seen a lot of differences from how Surrey has grown. Oh yeah, like look at the building here. Like this was here before there was a, we had a Sears here and this whole area was just a parking lot and the rec center was like smaller. And fast forward 20 years, look at it now. So it's, it's, it's great. This is great. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And what, why do you want to inspire young kids and young adults? What's the reason behind it? I think it's when you hear my story, I always use the example of, like, I'm the lowest common denominator guy. I'm the guy that you look at and say, like, you, either it frustrates you that I made it, or it frustrates that if he's doing it, I've got to be able to do it. And when you hear the story, you, you find out that, like, it's not much that I had, it's just what I did with what I did have. And I just went at it, I'm very, very persistent, annoyingly persistent, kind of going after my goals and going after people to get stuff done. And so I'm just trying to tell these kids, like, even kids, even adults, start now that 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 door that they think is not going to open it might not and if there's a hundred more keep knocking you know keep knocking it's actually there have there been any examples of students that have attended some of your events that have taken your advice or some of the tips that you've given and have actually you know put them into their into their life you know it's really humbling the emails that i get after my talks over the last five years kids i met Five years ago, um, some have said, you know, I was, when you came in, you know, some will say, I usually used to drop this class and not even show up, but because you were there, I showed up and I changed my grades. Um, I changed my outlook on life. Three girls, which was really um, meant a lot, they heard my talk and they put together uh, a, a fundraising event for the Cancer Society. And after my talk, about like four months later, I saw them a few times just to kind of guide them, but I didn't help them. They did it themselves. Uh, they raised eight thousand wow. dollars, and they're actually gonna, they're going to be here tonight for the talk too. So it's been really, um, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Like you, that's what you're giving. It's not, there's nothing tangible. It's just energy, and you you give people hope that okay, this guy's like told me I'm going to do it, and they go and do it. And you've actually given a lot back to your place that you've grown up in Surrey. And are there like some examples of different activities you've done or schools that you've reached out to? Yeah, like actually, all I'm so lucky. Every High school in Surrey 
has helped me. Um, Princess Margaret, uh, there's another a great gentleman by the name of Mr. Dillon. He is the, um, Mr. Dillon, uh, Margo Molson, she was at uh, Tamanuas, uh, John Hall. These people gave me my start. Like, they took a chance on me to say, mm -hmm. okay, we don't know, this guy's kind of shady, <laughs> so let's try him out. And they gave me my start, and that's how they allowed me to go to all the high schools from Portland Park to PM, some schools in Delta. And this is my training ground. This is where I learned to speak, learn to deal with teenagers, learn to deal with teachers. This is this is my hood. Any, any last words to, you know, some of our followers at 3604? If you could give them one piece of inspiration, what would it be? I think, you know what, it, I use this so many times to say it's, we, we become what we think about most of the time. I know it's a hard thing to take, but all the kind of stuff that you go through in life, the idea is that though that was just a mental weight. If you got through it, trust me, life gets much, much easier. And, and kind of get up, make that phone call, knock on that door. Trust me, success is like only that far away. Mm -hmm. That's it. Wow, Love story. Thank you so much, Rick. We really appreciate it. And just thank you for giving back to the community. We need more people like you to do what you're doing. It's amazing. Thanks. Thank you.